You can get faster in sim racing using these tips and techniques that I picked up from my real world racing. So in this video, I'm going to let you know what I learned racing Mazda MX-5s for real in Spain and how it can affect your driving. There's a lot to go through here, but I really hope it's going to be helpful. By the end of this video, you are going to have the tools to be an even faster sim racing driver than you currently are. And the first thing I want to talk about is braking. I learned so much about braking from driving in real life that I've taken into the sim. And the main benefit I've got from that is I'm more comfortable across many different simulators. So before, without realizing it, I'd got tuned in, dialed in to how the braking works in certain sims, but I couldn't really transfer it. Now, because I've got the broad principles, I can transfer it much more easily across simulators. And the main thing is braking in a straight line and appreciating that braking in a straight line is the most efficient way to brake. Have a look at the car on the left-hand side and you can see it bouncing around as a driver is maximum on the brakes, probably cutting in and out the ABS and the car is still struggling to go in a straight line. So tyres have a certain amount of grip. There is rubber on the tyres. That grip is used to either slow the car down or to give you grip when you're going around corners. And to put it really simply, it, you know, in simple terms, the tyres can only really do one thing well at a time. Obviously, you can get into trail braking, you try and blend between two, but either when I'm driving in real life and thinking about, am I trying to stop, stop the car, slow the car down as quickly as possible, in which case I'm braking in a straight line. Have a look here. Brake, 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 brake. And then off the brakes and turn in. And you can really feel the car pitch around as you make those inputs with your pedals. Now, if you try and come in at an angle we're on the brake, so not in a straight line, in real world racing, and I had this in the Ferrari 408 GT3 as well, you will just be very uncomfortable. Like, it's not a comfortable thing to do. You can see this entry here is such a wicked entry. And previously in the sim, I would be trying to come in at all different angles to brake as late as possible or brake at an angle, come off the brake, turn a lot. You can't do that in real life. Like, it's just too risky there with the concrete wall on the right hand side. You have to break it down to the fundamentals of how am I going to straight line brake this? How am I going to come off? How am I going to have the weight transfer of the car in the right place? You can see here I'm braking in a straight line into the corner. So see the straight line there, slowing the car down and coming off the brake and pitching it in. And this is what I said, it's a fundamental that you can take across many sims. Whereas there might be some sims where you can get away with, you know, not braking in a straight line. For example, and we're going into more simcade, but Gran Turismo 7, very understeery game, very um, sort of stable game. So you can, you can go into corners a little bit crooked. You don't need to go perfectly in a straight line. Something like Forza, which competes with Gran Turismo, you can't really do that because the cars just bounce around a lot more. There seems to be less grip between the tyres and the road. So if you take this straight line braking, you'll be able to do it in Gran Turismo, in, in Forza, but also in iRacing, ACC, R Factor 2, Limon Ultima, all of the big boy sims as well. Now you see here, by the way, on the right hand side, oh, it's another lap, something very dramatic happens. So keep looking out for that. And it was a great day out, by the way. This is all courtesy of RaceLogic and VBOX Motorsport. VBOX make the standard sort of race logging GPS telemetry um, data boxes that you see in real world motorsport, but they also work in your sim as well. So I've got other videos than that. The other thing I learned and <laughs> is gear changes. You're going to see so many overtakes here in this race come down to gear changes. And yes, we're in the Mazda MX-5. The gear changes are particularly important here, but any racing car, unless you're doing an electric one, like Formula E, you're going to have gear changes and they are so, so, so important. I've had a lot of people message me. I do a lot of coaching in uh, Gran Turismo 7 especially. I have the beginner masterclass. So by the way, if you want to get faster in Gran Turismo 7, learn some of the tips that I've, I've learned over the years. Go to the uh, link getfasteronline.com, link in the description, and you can get the beginner masterclass. I really recommend it if you're, if you're sort of early on in your sim racing career, but also if you're kind of part of the way through it's a good refresher as well but gear changes super important people ask me why am i losing time on the straight how can i be losing time on the straight well a lot of it is about gearing if you're in the wrong gear or you're making a gear shift at the wrong time you see a completely different line through that corner and it almost puts them in the wall i wonder if this is where this gramus is no it isn't so um you know gear changes here you can see the cars moving around on the gear change look at my hand on the gear shift there and we go up the gear and we're going to get the overtake done i would say partly because we got that gear shift done at the right time and a smooth gear change 
So that is the same in sim racing. Yes, when you're sim racing cars, you're going to be driving cars usually with a lot more power. This Mazda MX-5. But the principles are the same. And the top esports drivers are laser focused on their gear shifting, doing it at the same time. You see here, I've caught so much up on this car. Again, likely to be a gear shifting issue. Let's see what happens. They go defensive. I'm going to try and go to the outside and probably do a cut back here. Technique that I've learned a lot on the sim. Not really going to fly. Nope. Blocked off there. But again, more opportunities with the gear shifts. You can see I've got a pretty nice shift there. Can try and go up the inside, but that would be risky. Are we going to think about the cutback again? Opening it up. You can see the car squirming around on the brakes, as I said. You don't really get that sensation in the sim. But remember, simulators are simulating real life, and in real life, you definitely do. Have a look at the gear shifts. Bonk. All the way through. You can see just in the cam there, and we get past. Amazing to see. So gear shifts really, really, really important. The other appreciation that I've taken from real world racing that I've taken in my sim racing is VR is a much more realistic way of racing than... Oh, there we go. You see what happened there? There was someone taking a video of us with a one of those flappy phone cases that was red and it looked like a red flag. <laughs> so I almost crashed into the back of someone, ironically, not under red flag conditions. Um, but yeah, you know, VR is a much more representative way of racing. The way that you sense cars coming alongside you. I'm talking about sort of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. Yes, you have the obvious benefits like depth perception, which is really important, and not looking at a screen and trying to infer how quickly your braking marker is approaching. Here, you just in VR, you just perceive it as, I, as I'm doing here in real life. But the sensation of being around cars is an amazing sensation. I, I was karting before I was sim racing, so I feel very comfortable in close quarters with other vehicles. But here, for example, I'm not really looking at the car. Oh, God, goodness me, good job I wasn't, because someone's had a terrible gear change there. Are we going to go up the inside? But you sort of have to feel it in your peripheral vision, like here. You have to feel the car alongside you. And subtle things like shadowing, the noise as well, because in VR you get very good binaural audio. It's given me a real uh, appreciation for VR, and you've probably seen me race more in VR since I've done my real-world racing because I can appreciate that a lot of the cues that you get are, are realistic. And I do want to be sharpening my tools in sim racing so I can be quick when I go back into real world racing. See here another drag race down the straight. Gear change is very important. I probably spent too much time with my hand on the gear stick there, proverbially. Um, you know, when I should have two hands on the wheel, but that's because I am trying to really sort of focus gear shifting. The other thing I want to talk about, and this is um, really very relevant to people who are thinking about doing a track day or you've done some sim racing and you, you think in the future you might want to take your car to track or rent a car to track. I'm going to tell you what I struggled about here. My biggest struggle in this real world racing in this particular Mazda MX-5 series was downshifting. So have a look here. Look at the brake, the clutch and everything needed to happen. Like now I can do it but at the beginning of when I came when I flew out here for this round I really struggled with the downshifting. I was having the clutch in my... When I drive my Peugeot RCZ sports car in real life, I roll up to the lights with the clutch sort of dropped in. Um, whereas you don't do that in racing. Some of these braking zones... Well, to be honest, it should be every braking zone. This one's a bit sketchy because if you miss your braking here, you're going to end up in the sea, literally. But a lot of these braking zones, I'm only able to make with the additional help of engine braking. So you can see there, my time spent on the clutch is very minimal. That is very different to how I drive in real life. If you're not sure what's going on, have a look at my left leg. When I push it in, I'm engaging the clutch there. And it's like a button. I'm like in and out. I'm not rolling it at all. In, out, bang. Minimizing time uh, with the clutch uh, disengaged strictly. Because then I'm not, you know, connecting the drivetrain. And I found that very difficult on the first day because... I was having the clutch engaged for too long and that meant that I wasn't getting the engine braking. I was trying to hit my braking markers when my instructor had said, look, you can brake this late. And I was basically almost crashing every corner. And it was only until I had the confidence to, and it sounds really easy when I talk about it now, but I can tell you when you're steaming in here, 90 miles an hour, there's not a lot of runoff. It's, um, it, it's, dif it, you know, it's difficult to do and I'm very proud of this. We go, oh, almost cra we do crash. Goodness me. We've ended off there. 
as I've um, basically put a boot full of uh, throttle down too early, shake of the head, giving up a position. Are we going to catch it back? But yeah, so if you are going for track days and you're going to be driving in a manual car and it's going to be having a gearbox like this, I really recommend safely, 100% safely, I want to be super clear about that, sort of practicing, um, you know, spending less time with the clutch and go. See the smoke on the left-hand side that I've kicked up there? Like a uh, exhaust flame for the Mazda MX-5 in front as well. Please make sure to subscribe, by the way, if this helps you, and, and make sure you check out the beginner masterclass at Get Faster Online if you want to get faster yourself. By the way, there is nothing more fun than racing in real life. Sim racing is a lot of fun. I This whole channel is really built on sim racing. Real world racing is more fun. It's more dangerous. Have a look here. As again, we come in at 90 miles an hour. The weight transfer is all crooked. There's a concrete wall on the right hand side. There's not a lot of runoff at the top. We're going to come down now into these very fast S's where you can't really go two by two. So I'm going to try and overtake this car before we get into the S's because it wouldn't work here on the inside. I've just gone off. I've got dirty tyres. That is the thing you have in sim racing and we're going to get the move done. And look how late I'm going to break it. So you can see, I wouldn't make, I, I, I would crash there if it wasn't for the engine braking. Great battle here. And again, you have that respect. And that is something you can get in sim racing, by the way. You can get that level of respect in sim racing. You know, in I racing, uh, Lemon Ultimate now, Gran Turismo, whatever sim you're doing that has these sort of splits. You know, there's some people I've raced against in sim racing now for over half a decade. And we do have that same camaraderie. And this video, by the way, is, uh, I really hope you, you've enjoyed it so far, it, it is proof that you can do sim racing and you can compete in racing because ultimately, I think there were 12, 13, 14 cars maybe in this race and most of them, uh, most of their drivers were real world drivers or automotive people. And I'm a sim racer and you see here, my first race here finished P5. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow this up with another video of another, another Mazda MX-5 race. So let me know what you want to see me cover in that video so I can make sure I'm hitting all the points. But I just wanted to share this with you and show you that journey from sim to real is possible, even for you and me. I will see you next time.